All right, now, everybody. Quiet, listen to me. We're going to start a show. Now, some of you people have been with me before. You know it's going to be a tough crime. But we're going to have a show. And hello, there is breaking news of this moment that we will get to on this show in a minute. But it's great to have on a Friday our crew here. Albert, thank you. Albert, of course. And Kim is Kim, how are you? at her post. Mark Thompson Everybody in there baby. Sh- Woo! Yeah, baby. You know, Friday, we get it on. So uh, I've got news out of the prosecutor's office in that Trump case in Georgia. Fannie Willis, we'll talk about that. I will address the poll that is in swing states, this poll, suggesting that Trump narrowly beats Biden in the swing states. Again, it's still early, but I'll give you more details on that. And Michael Shore will be along to talk about that. A case that might have gotten away from you, although I think Kim did touch on it in her news along the way, is the case of the tax leaker, the IRS employee, Charles Littlejohn, who leaked the returns of Donald Trump and also uh, his stated purpose was to leak the returns of many rich people who pay little or nothing in taxes. He got in a severe sentence. I want to revisit that. Florida today, we've got the Culture Blaster with movies. Wow, it's a great show. Let's go. I uh, also will respond to emails that I did receive. One of them corrects me Uh on a way I say a word. Chit-chit. Exactly. It was a chit-chit-chit moment. And (laughs) I, in my arrogance, thought, don't correct me on how I say a word. I'm sure I'm saying it correctly. But then I checked. Mm -hmm. And I think this person was and is correct about What? What? (laughs) Correct in correcting me. Imagine that. So this could be uh, an apology. That's Uh, not fake. That's real. Yeah, exactly. I'll share that with you in a moment. Kelly Malloy with our first super sticker of the day. Thank you for a five spot to get us uh, started on uh, on a Friday. You know who's in the chat every day? Who? At the very beginning, before the show goes on. I think every day, most days, and I do take note of it, and I want you to know I take note of it, is Walter Fristo. Now, Walter Fristo, there he is, will always give us the birthdays for the day in the chat. We don't ever refer to them on the air in any other way. Mm -hmm. It only exists in the chat, but it's kind of a cool thing, and I do note it. Like today, it's Shakira's birthday. Yeah. Anne Rand. James Joyce and like Stan him. Getz. You got a couple of musicians, uh, authors, w- yeah. One crazy communist. She's not even a no. Anne Rand is a. How would you describe her? Go- Google Anne Rand, uh, Albert, and tell me how they describe uh, Anne Google Rand. It. I mean, it's um, moody, moody, and uh, dark. She's against. Uh, she's against yeah. uh, you know all social supports. And she's, um, how do they, what, how do they describe her politically? That's what I'm curious about. Objectivism. Objectivism. What it says here in my quick search, I just, uh, the first, I just, the first thing I saw. On wiki, that's what they say. Yeah, wiki, um, yeah. Wiki, uh, you say wiki? Oh, really? (laughs) Is that wrong? Isn't it wiki? Uh Oh, save it for the email. Wikipedia, not wikipedia. Wiki, wiki. Um, maybe. Anyway, she did. I don't know what. Um, she was against um, uh, any sort of. Um, you are saying libertarian in the chat. I would say okay, yeah. Um, although I thought she was against libertarianism, but I, I don't know. She, she, you know, you know, Atlas Shrugged and um, what was the other big Fountainhead? Her other other big book. Mm-hmm. Anyway, uh. She sounds like so, a great time. Yeah. She, <laughs> great hangout. Yeah. Apparently, it's her birthday. Shakira is more fun, if I can say that. And Stan Getz. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, and James Joyce will bum you out, but um, the great Irish uh, author. All right. Uh, so so that's that. Uh, I just wanted to acknowledge, Walter, I do see your, um, your messages every day, and I get a kick out of it. The Mark Thompson Show. So what we will do today 
is review first a little bit of this breaking news. It was noted yesterday in our conversation with David Katz, the federal prosecutor who turned defense attorney, former federal prosecutor, that this development, should it happen in the Fannie Willis case, because it was anticipated, the development is that essentially she had a relationship with somebody on uh, who ended up on the staff. Fannie Willis said um, there was a relationship with this colleague, this guy Nathan Wade. Katz noted that it could delay the trial, but in no way does it derail the trial. Because in, in the office, you can always reassign it. She can recuse herself now. There are a number of things that can be done so that the, the trial against former President Donald Trump, this is the election interference case, can continue. Yeah. Now, it's been about a month that there have been these allegations of a clandestine personal relationship, an improper personal relationship between Fannie Willis and Nathan Wade. Nathan Wade became the prosecutor, okay? Um, but there is a motion to disqualify both of them and the entire office from handling the case. I mean, you know, we'll see what happens, but again, Katz suggested that there are many other cures for this situation besides just dissolving everything. Um, while the allegations raised in the various motions are salacious, which is a ding word, and garnered the media attention they were designed to obtain, none provide this court with any basis upon which to order the relief they seek. In other words, dissolving the case, right? So this is her filing, and she says, the personal relationship between Ms. Willis and the prosecutor Nathan J. Wade has never, this is a quote, has never involved direct or indirect financial benefit to Ms. Willis. Uh, she includes an affidavit from Mr. Wade asserting that the personal relationship started only after Mr. Wade had been hired. The original motion containing accusations filed by Michael Roman, who was a former Trump, a Trump campaign official, it said that Ms. Willis had hired her, quote, boyfriend, as a special prosecutor, granting him lucrative contracts, even though he was underqualified and then benefited from going on vacations that Mr. Wade, that Mr. Wade paid for. It must, that, so it, it suggested, I don't know, um, there's a lot that is read into what they suggest, but what they're saying is essentially in this latest filing is, hey, he wasn't my boyfriend. I hired him, and then there was a relationship after he was working with me. Ms. Willis said in her filing that financial responsibility for personal travel taken is divided roughly evenly. So when the two go away on vacation, they split it more or less. Adding that Ms. Willis received no funds or personal financial gain from my position as special prosecutor. Trump is probably thinking, really? How could you let that happen? You let an opportunity to get a payoff get away from you? My God. <laughs> um, I have so to agree that's... With, Don with Donald, who says, why do people do this stuff when they know it'll be revealed and it might cause problems? And I have to say, she's been really careful. Remember when there were people were uh, barraging her with all ty types of criticisms and complaints, and she didn't respond. She was very professional. She knew she had to be very, very careful. Why would she let herself get involved in a relationship that could be used against her right now? The heart wants what it wants. <laughs> That's why. It's very difficult sometimes to resist, man. You... Yeah. You work with people, you work closely with people, those are the people you interact with, and when you're really attracted to somebody and you work with them over a, a, any kind of period of time, it, it, it happens. I mean, if I can say something that's not PC, uh, I'll, I'll say this also. How many people do I know in their 60s and 70s, and I ask them, where, where did you guys meet? I, you know, and they say, oh, well, you know, I the was office. his assistant. 
Oh. I was his secretary. You hear that in that generation because women were often limited to those jobs in the office. I think things have changed, but now things have changed to, oh, we worked in the same office. He was a colleague. We worked on the Ford Motor Company account together, mm -hmm. and we spent a lot of time, and I realized this is a really cool guy, and we end up married, and now we have three kids. I, I, in other words, I've never really understood. I get when somebody's a supervisor and somebody's an underling or somebody, you know, I, I understand right. how that relationship can be leveraged in all the nasty, awful ways that we've seen it play out. We just had the Vince McMahon story yesterday. I mean, she was working for McMahon as an assistant. She's forced to do all this stuff and sexual activity for him and his friends and for uh, uh, other people on the you know WWE roster. But all I'm trying to say is within, and look, this is probably, if you're a Trumpy, sounding like I'm trying to justify the Fonnie Willis relationship. And in a way, I am. But I'm also suggesting that I think our general take on these things is unfair, but it's fraught with problems, as Kim says. I mean, yeah. like, you, you have to know that they're going to make something of this. Yeah, I agree again, Donald. She should have known Trump and his minions would be looking for any tiny thing to blow up in the media, anything. Right. Yeah, so, I mean, even if the heart wants what he, it wants, and even if she had the hots for the guy, couldn't they have had a secret love affair and then, you know, not really come public with this whole thing and taken vacations together until after the trial was over? Well, they did have a secret love affair, I think, on some level. But um, secret might overstate it. Maybe a small S on secret. The <laughs> vacation part. I mean, that's part of a love yeah. affair. They want to go away together. Oh, I, I, no. I don't know, Kim. It's a. Uh, again, I mean, I'm sure. Yeah, she's doing that. One of the most important prosecutions in the country, right? The only prosecution where he won't be able to pardon himself. This is critical and key. And she's putting this, you know, she can't can't push off a relationship for a year yeah. until this whole thing yeah. is dealt with. Come it's on true. now. It's true. Yeah. I mean. I mean, what you're doing is, is important to the country, man. Yeah. It's a, um, it's pretty remarkable that this is happening. But it is also, as I've suggested, not the end of this <laughs> entire affair in georgia if you'll pardon the expression yeah. um look it's not as interesting as the tj holmes and amy rohrbach uh, affair that was really they were both married they're both on good morning america that was far juicier to me but there you go two people working together they fell in love they had the hots for each other as you said right and, now uh, it's mating season and they're hungry yeah. <laughs> right now it's mating season and they're hungry so um all right. Um, digging needs to go on between Haba and Trump, says Andrew Peters. Mm, well, he fired her, so whatever love yeah. affair was there. Is yeah, it was her. over. But, you know, again, if Trump was rolling around with his attorney, it wouldn't bother me. I mean, yeah. you know, I, I just, you know, I've always, even. I felt this way about Stormy Daniels. Mm -hmm. I don't care about Stormy Daniels. I don't care who the guy rolls around with. Right. So he's married. Big deal. I don't care. That's his business. That's Melania's business. Right. You can roll around every day with another one of the these Trump, drunk on Trump women if you want. Mm -hmm. When you pay them off with election money, that becomes a violation of the law. But the affair itself... I don't care, and I don't think anybody else should care. But, well, Mark, it reflects that he doesn't know how to honor a commitment he's made. Character. We don't know what their deal is. Yeah, exactly. We don't know what deals they've made with each other. I always thought, have thought that if someone cheats on someone else, like, that's between those two people. They made a, you know, they made a commitment to each other or not, but that's the person who should be upset. I don't have any, you know, skin in that game. Sure. But I have skin in this game and the appearance of impropriety, the appearance that she's done something wrong financially. She's given them now something to pick on her for. Before That's she was true. like yeah. crystal, she was clean, she was above it all. And now she's given them something to say, look, she's, uh, she's shady. This whole thing is shady, right? And so now yeah. we got a problem. The... Um, impropriety, I will ding. Thank you. Gail Guthrie, Hall of Fame 
a contributor. Uh, um, she has a Hall of Fame uh, spot, I think, in a couple of categories. In the One of those contributions, right? and yeah. yeah, and also Super Sticker, Super Chat uh, Hall of Fame. It's very interesting. Uh, Gail's uh, imprint in the Hall of Fame is quite extensive. Anyway, she says, the current news today is too much to take. I may have to take a break from it all. Wow. I mean, that's a... Good day, sir! <laughs> yeah, well, we've got enough. Friday Fabulous Florida coming <laughs> yeah, we have Friday so that's Fab- a pretty Don't good worry. break. <laughs> we'll change it up. Yeah. We'll change it up. Uh, but that is the breaking news. Now, Vivian L. Shawa. Woo-hoo! Come on, Vivian L. Shawa. What up, Vivian L. Shawa? Big shout out. Yeah, big shout out. Why not? And how about Winthrop for a five spot with a super nice. sticker? Thank Big you. Shout out. Yeah, I love it. Wow, this is really cool. Thank you for uh, on a Friday stepping up. You know we're crowd funded now. I want to ask about something that is um, has been reported to me as a problem here in the home office. So, the Mark Thompson show. Will you explain to me, Kim, because your husband is our tech Web guru? Guy. Really, yeah. we haven't really tapped him. I like I don't like to lean on him because he's essentially working uh, for free. Uh, and, um, I, uh, but, but he was helpful in setting up the Mark Thompson show.com. Now, if you yeah. go to the Mark Thompson show.com, many of us have gone there and many have written in and said, they're getting some SSL kind of response. Can you comment yeah. on that, please? So I log in yesterday when you say there's problems and it's fine from my end. John Daly mm-hmm. logged in and said, it's fine from his end. So right. we thought maybe it was a problem on your end. But moments ago, I approached the Mark Thompson Show Tech Center and was told that an SSL certificate likely needs to be renewed. Mm. Um, This is the thing that is apparently the difference between HTTP and HTTPS. So we have a, for whatever reason, we have a secure site. Um, And because of that, we have to likely renew our certificate. So uh, if he can remember the password, he says today, he will go in and see that uh, what he can do to renew what needs to be renewed. If that is indeed the problem, he'll troubleshoot that and get us back up and running. Okay. Well, if he can't remember the password and has to reset the password, can he please share that information with me? Because this is really awful. Yeah. Tried to get to Mark's website. Couldn't. Yeah, I, I know. It's um, yes, anonymous. It's likely that the certificate expired. Expired. Yes. Yeah, no, I had that up there before. Yeah. Um, so anyway, oh, it's a um, uh, yeah. We have to stay on top of these things, and I'm sorry. Uh, those are, so several people are yeah. saying we wanted to we wanted to contribute and be Patreon oh, no. and PayPal members, but we can't. Um, mm. You know. Yes, Walter. Thank you. You're right. We have processes, processes. and protocols and standards. Well, apparently we have processes and protocols. We don't have standards, uh, though. That's the uh, that's the issue here. So uh, anyway, thank you, Kim, for investigating that. Thank you, David, in advance. Is he uh, working likely, on this now? Did he drop whatever he's doing to work on this uh, or not? Uh, he ha- does have a meeting, but he says by end of day, he will attempt to have the fix in. Okay, that is a good That sounds news. like an email that you send. You send it to the IT or like the IT department. Like, yeah, yeah end of day will be yeah, available. Yeah, end of day, yeah. exactly. Mm-hmm. End of day is the biggest, the, uh, right. Mark Thompson Tech Department. They know did how, how it Did he say end of day or did you did you recharacterize it as end of day yourself? Uh, I might have recharacterized. Uh, it felt yeah. recharacterized to me, so. <laughs> the Mark Thompson Show. I'm going to do this for Gail Guthrie, Albert. Do you have that Wheel of Fortune a thing? Yes, I can pull that up. I did see All right, see so Wheel of Fortune. Let me set this up. Wheel of Fortune. Thank you, Spencer. How about yeah. a $5 super sticker? It's a big si- Big shout we out. We are not to because people can't get to the website, the MarkThompsonShow.com. We're getting a renewed super sticker super chat push here today, and thank you for that. On Wheel of Fortune, Wheel apparently of there Fortune. is a controversy <laughs> because a contestant there had you know i don't know if you watch wheel of fortune uh of course kim i never miss an episode and what happens is at the end of wheel of fortune in the bonus round they put up the letters and the person's thinking out loud the contestant they sure. go um you know i uh, um the um you know uh uh purple uh, uh i uh and whatever right oh it's purple rose of cairo there was another okay so here it is she's thinking out loud now what the controversy revolves around is that the category was living thing and the puzzle that appeared after she got the traditional R, S, T, L, N, and E 
and guessed her letters P, N, R, C, and D, the puzzle looked like that. Albert has it up for you there. The first words out of her mouth, her name is Megan. The first words out of Megan's mouth, once the timer started, sounded a bit like Pink Orchid. William Lundgren, who's just weighed in on the chat, thinks she actually said Pink Orchid. It. Dora Lopez says, I thought I heard Pink Lor uh, Orchid also. Now, I have to say, to guess Pink Orchid with those letters revealed doesn't seem like a tough leap, meaning it seems pretty doable, Pink Orchid. I mean, you look at it, what, what else could it be? Right. Pine something, maybe, I suppose. But anyway, so what the Wheel of Fortune universe is angry about is they feel Megan did say Pink Orchid mm -hmm. when she first began saying the various possible answers over and over. Now we'll play you the clip. You tell me if she says Pink Orchid and should have been awarded the money. Go ahead, Albert. Um, I think we might get demonetized. Oh, demonetized. That. <laughs> yeah. That's why I just, the screenshot. Oh, the screenshot. Maybe, maybe I I'll, am... I'll tweet it or something and we I'll just forward everybody What? Okay. After that it. set up, I guess I should have <laughs> talked to Albert before. Look at Albert looking out for you. Nice. <laughs> Thank you. We're being demonetized so many other ways. Um, by the way, when we're demonetized, we still get all your super sticker super chat money, so it doesn't it doesn't matter. Um, Daniel says, I did not hear Pink Orchid, and I was watching live. Wow, that is... Well, I will tell you that when they... Uh, so they didn't give it to her, okay? They didn't, they didn't hear Pink Orchid. The judges, producers, whatever, Pat Sajak, he didn't hear Pink Orchid. So when... Uh, he opened up the envelope, Sajak did, to say, you know, what she would have won if she had said Pink Orchid. It was $40,000. Oh. So it, it ain't nothing. Yeah. And so, indeed, I can see where... Whoever is, is producing one. this thing right. has no idea what well, they're doing. Thank you. Chris you, says are the you same just thing. able to holler out a bunch of suggestions as to what you think it is, or do you have to hone in on one and say, like, I think it's Pink Orchid final answer? You can... You can just spin. Okay. You can say uh, pine orchid, p uh, uh, pine tree, uh, pink, uh, pink, pink orchid, and then they'll, you know, they'll. Do you have a certain number of seconds to holler yeah, out things right. you think are possible. Oh, okay. Yeah, you're on the clock. So um, she says, pink orchid or something orchid or whatever. She's like talking like that. Um, so. Uh, but she didn't I, say, I said pink orchid. Right. So here's the, so here, thank you, because this is what I wanted to say, and then I'll move on. When he said, oh, I'm sorry, we wanted pink orchid. She didn't say, I said pink orchid. She didn't say that. Yeah. She didn't protest at all. She didn't push back. Then he opened up the $40,000 envelope and he went, oh, that's really too bad. But you did get 14000 <laughs> whatever, and, you know, see you later. Now. Nope. There are two things I would say about that. Number one it's hard sometimes to push back on those shows. You're on live. The host says you didn't say it. You may think later, I'll work it out. Or you just may think, nah, maybe I did say it, maybe I didn't, I don't know. In other words, you feel a little intimidated by the environment. So I can understand maybe not saying, hey, Pat, I said Pink Orchid. You know, it's a little hard to say that maybe. Um, that said, uh, she really seemed okay with it. But, man, Wheel of Fortune Nation was not happy. They <laughs> felt she did say it. Uh, anyway, I, uh, that's the wheel. nothing. She gets no She got 14000 north of 14000 which she won on the wheel. Uh, have a great weekend, Mark, Kim, and Albert. Vicky Ooh, and Sausalito. Big, big shout-out. Shout out. Thank you, Vicky. Appreciate that. Nice. And Chris Prell. What up, Chris Prell with a big five spot? Out. Thank you, Chris. Spencer Griffin. Yeah, Spencer. Big is a shout out. Big supporter of the show. Appreciate nice. it. Well, thanks everybody for being here. We've got Friday Fabulous Florida. John Daly will join. We'll do a turbo newscast first. Smash the like button like a boss. Thank you for being here. Everybody's on deck. Michael Shore with politics. A lot to talk about. That new poll in the swing states. We'll get to that. And Michael Snyder, the culture blaster with the What to Watch This Weekend. Mark Thompson Show. The Mark Thompson Show.
on the Mark Thompson Show. I'm Kim McAllister. This report sponsored by Tenuta Vineyards in Livermore. The prosecutor behind Donald Trump's Georgia election interference case is responding to allegations of misconduct. As Mark mentioned, Fulton County District Attorney Fonnie Willis in a court filing today admitted she did have a personal relationship with an outside prosecutor that she appointed to manage the case against former President Trump. The defendants in the case accuse Willis of benefiting financially by hiring special prosecutor Nathan Wade, her alleged romantic partner, for hundreds of thousands of dollars. Uh, They want the case dismissed. The remains of three American soldiers killed in an overseas drone attack were returned to the United States today. President Biden joining the families of the fallen for today's dignified transfer ceremony at Dover Air Force Base in Delaware. Sergeant William Rivers of Carrollton, Georgia, Specialist Kennedy Sanders of Waycross, Georgia, and Specialist Brianna Moffitt of Savannah, Georgia, were killed when an Iranian-made drone hit a border outpost in Jordan last week. The FAA is confirming three people are dead in a small plane crash in Florida. A pilot and two people on the ground killed last night when this plane slammed into the Bayside Waters Mobile Home Park in Clearwater, west of Tampa. The crash and the fire destroyed one mobile home and heavily damaged three others. Former California Senator Barbara Boxer is now endorsing Burbank Congressman Adam Schiff in the race for California's next U.S. Senator. Boxer initially said she would stay neutral in this race. She said recent unwarranted attacks on Schiff by fellow candidate Katie Porter caused her to change her mind. Uh, Former Senator Boxer also calls Schiff, a fellow Democrat, an ally to women in politics. Schiff is the current frontrunner vying to replace Boxer's former colleague, the late Dianne Feinstein. Los Angeles Kings fired head coach Todd McClellan. Uh, General manager Rob Blake making the announcement this morning saying McClellan positively impacted the team, but the change was necessary at this time. As it happens, uh, Jim Hiller has been named interim head coach for the remainder of this season for the Los Angeles Kings. Uh, Todd McClellan used to be a Sharks also, uh, Sharks head coach, and he made it to... uh, he made it pretty far with us, but never actually won it anywhere. Yeah. Hmm. Billy Joel set to perform at this year's Grammy Awards. The Long Island native, speaking of sports where uh, Travis Kelsey will not be attending the Grammy Awards <laughs> this year, uh, the Long Island native who's won five Grammys released his first single in almost two decades yesterday. It's called Turn the Lights Back On. It's his first new song since 2007's All My Life. He is expected to sing it on the Grammys broadcast, which takes place in Los Angeles on Sunday on CBS at 8 p.m. Eastern. So maybe. last night I mm-hmm. was thinking about Billy Joel. I don't know why, but maybe I'd heard what you're talking about or read what you're talking about. He's got a new song. He just mm-hmm. seemed. And I thought, you know, Billy Joel may have really one of the best lives I've ever witnessed among celebrities. I mean, why? Why the do you other, think that? the other. The other might be Sting. I think Sting has done like he, it feels like he's honored his his heart and his yeah. soul. And he's uh, Sting wrote a Broadway show about his uh, the kind of based loosely on his childhood, and it was really good. And, and of course, Sting's a great musician. And Joel also, you know, he wrote Piano Man, which was his first big song, and that was based on his actual existence as a piano playing performer in bars and stuff. And then he rocketed to fame. The 70s and 80s were informed by all of this Billy Joel success. So as an artist, he is just bursting out. He uh, married Christy Brinkley, who is like this, you know, she was like the royalty of supermodeldom, you know. It seemed like his every indulgence and his every desire, artistically, personally, et cetera, and then... He they, gave they, he gave it all up. I'm not even done. He went through a divorce, though. I was going to say. I'm gonna, Can you let him finish, sir? Will you let him let me finish, sir? What not I'm trying happy. to say is, he then gave it up and went to the world of designing boats. He designed <laughs> these huge luxury yachts. Oh. Okay, so he is expressing himself artistically in yet another way, and then. He goes back to performing at Madison Square Garden and massive arenas like Madison Square Garden, and he performs with Elton John. 
and that tour sells out. So he's why are you yelling? His now he's flexing that muscle again, and he has a new song out, and he's revered by the music industry. I I don't know, Kim. I think he may have have led and be living his very best life. I guess that's what I'm getting to. Oh, well, you know, a, a Billy Joel song, a new Billy Joel song after 20 years, it's going to be well received. I mean, his his music is kind of timeless and classic. Nah, it, I don't know about that. I don't I, know about that. Hey, Huey Lewis did a song after 20 years, and it wasn't well received. Well, but Huey Lewis has that 80s sound, right? And but but Billy Joel, it's him and a piano. Like I don't know. No, it's not. I mean, Here's listen. A Billy there, Joel yacht, thank by you. The that's way. the yeah. yacht. Wow, yeah. look at that yacht. Mm -hmm. He designed that. Yeah, that's cool. It's absolute incredible. Why are you yelling? Life he's led. It's just unreal. Yeah. We had that that's... birthday chatter. It's actually Christy Brinkley's birthday today, also. Oh, wow, yeah. Christy Brinkley. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I just feel as though he may have lived and be living his very best life. Hmm. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Kim seems completely unconvinced, but all right. I mean, it's you just... Uh, ch -ch -ch she is very... Uh, but he had a divorce, Mark. He had a divorce. Ch -ch -ch <laughs> well, I mean, that's not... Per you know, it, there was hardship in there. there I'm not saying it's per... There. I mean, There's, it's life. There's everything. You know? But I, but I, yeah. I think my point is simply that his... He flexed every creative muscle he could want, and and personally achieved such great heights. So yeah, there's three, Christy three divorces. He's on his fourth marriage. So on the yeah. Larry King scale, not close. But <laughs> yeah, it's true. What can you tell us about the scene? It's only four divorces, Larry. He's four short of you. What can you tell us about the scene? Christy Brinkley and a bunch of other hot women who he was married. What can to. you tell us about <laughs> the scene? <laughs> it, uh, Billy Joel's new record album. Uh, what Albert can you tell us about the scene? Mm -hmm. You could expedite that by running one back, maybe with Christy Brinkley. I got could, yeah, that's right. Double over. back and and marry yeah. Christy again. Uh, Kim, you know, you always suggest, at least you imply, that divorce yeah. is a bad thing. I mean, he may no, have been happier not, with the divorce. Not always, know? but when you have kids, it's rough on kids, and you know, and going through a divorce is going to be—it's—it's a—it's hard, it's hard. Yeah, you yeah. know, it's not like a, the happiest of days. You never want a marriage to fail, so you mm -hmm. know, tough times. Billy Brinkley Joel. was born a gold digger, says Chris. What? Wow. <laughs> Didn't she? Chris well, she's a Chris supermodel. Is a, Chris is truly a uh, Christy an Brinkley, S disturber. He, she he brought likes to her own the, money to the marriage. Please. Yeah, she was a supermodel. Ridiculous. Pal. Yeah, I get it. Maybe she didn't have Billy Joel money. She didn't but, come um, with a handout. Come yeah, on. Exactly. What can you tell us about the scene? She had her own money, Larry. She was Asinine. a supermodel. What can you tell us about the All scene? Right, Larry, you can settle down. Well, let me tell you that when you settle in to watch the Grammys on Sunday night and you're thinking, what, I'm just going to pour myself a nice big glass of red wine. I'm going to listen to this new song live mm. on the Grammys. I feel the yes. sponsorship coming. You, you, and, and you would be correct, sir, <laughs> because Tenuta Vineyards is the perfect glass yes, of wine. Is. Sip your little wine, watch yeah. your little Grammys, hear your little Billy Joel thing going right. on. What can you tell us about the scene? Yeah, get we my got Tenuta you. wine out, Larry, right. and Billy Joel's new song on the Grammys. We got your back because we get you 10% off at, at Tenuta Vineyards. You do have to work for it a little bit. You got to call them and say, smash it with your iron rod. Mm -hmm. Smash yeah. it with your iron rod. Sure. You call Rich at 925-699-4576 and say that and you get your 10% off on a bottle or two of case, whatever it is that you want to order. Uh, check it out and call them at Tenuta Winery and say the smash it with your iron rod and get your discount and you're good to go. Then you got wow. your wine and look at all. Everything's I good for you. Man. You got a Billy Joel kind of life you're living. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Minus the divorce. I'm Kim McAllister. This is the Mark Thompson Show. They had to close down an entire radio station to silence him. And now he's here. Ladies and gentlemen, Mark Thompson. The Mark Thompson Show. Who's Mark Thompson? I'm sorry, Dave. I'm afraid I can't do that. Jada had nothing to do with it. 
Mark. It's Stuart Santos here. A lot of people are telling me you're a liar. That's pure speculation. We're in better shape, but I don't think we're in wildly better shape. I love it when you're angry. Your Honor, I'd like to ask for a recess. Where are my weed smokers at? What do you think I'm going to say to you? Don't talk to me that way. That was very inappropriate. That's not fake. That's real. Seriously, what the f***? I love it. It was great. I loved it. It was wrong. It was stupid. And I'm trying to be a better person. It's fantastic. Whoever is producing this thing has no idea what they're doing. The science is ridiculous. Yes, it is. So glad to have you all here. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Big shout out to our Patreon and PayPal supporters. You keep this show going and you can be one of those Patreon or PayPal supporters at the Mark Thompson Show. Dot com. Now, there was a... Uh, at the, Maybe. <laughs> the, well, the deal with the MarkThompsonShow.com right now today yeah. is that there's some SSL certificate that has to be renewed. Yeah. Now, Kim's husband, David, is our guy. He's our go-to tech guy. And uh, we don't go to him much. Maybe we should go to him more frequently so that he would be... <laughs> Uh, you know, uh, acquainted with everything that's going on on a more sure. uh, uh, ongoing basis. But the point is, uh, if you're you're getting that SSL thing, that's the reason. So sorry about that. We hope to have that resolved, uh, as Kim said, by end of day. Mm -hmm. One of the people who uh, I turn to for technical stuff is going to join us now because he also is kind of a techie. And uh, that is, uh, and let's have a warm welcome for him now, fabulous producer John Day. Fabulous producer John Day. Yeah. Oh, oh. John. And I hate yeah. to give you a second opinion. Yeah. But, you know, we weren't getting a message that the SSL certificate was expired. So based on that hunch, I checked your certificate. It does not expire until Sunday, October 13th, 2024 at 2100 mm. uh, mm. hours GMT. So I think so, there's a problem on the server end. And so I think by contacting GoDaddy, you can get it uh, resolved because right. I'm having no problem getting to it. Yeah, okay. so, obviously, so if, if if it was expired, I would not be able to get to the website. Oh, and this is very so. interesting. Wow. Very, very impressive, John. So I need Fabulous to, I need to call GoDaddy and ask them what's going on. I think, or David needs to get in contact with their technical yeah. support. Okay. Okay. By, by end we'll of do that. End. We'll take care of that on this end. And that'd be great because, yeah, um, yeah I mean, it get, it's, um, you know, it's obviously critical. <laughs> so, yeah. um John, I want to, before I continue, want to uh, acknowledge, I think, your fine uh, work that you do on uh, the After Party Live. I want to give you a plug up front we'll here. Live. And uh, you do it with Kim. We'll do it and Kim and you both, I think, do really nice work there. I enjoy it. I watch it as frequently as I possibly can, which is a not, lot, not actually. Every day. Not every day. No, it's uh, okay. Um, not every day, okay. but yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. let's be real. Uh, you're a busy man. Yeah. Uh, it is our six month anniversary at the After Party Live. That's mm -hmm. very, very cool. I like how when I'm paying somebody a lavish compliment, they somehow <laughs> undercut it by going, Well, you don't watch every day, though, do no, you? No, I'm trying to like, uh, give you I an watch, out. I watch most days. I really do. So, uh, but is it not? It's not every day, but though, right? Here, yeah, yeah, I'm like... Sorry, dude. I just, I'm, I'm telling you how great the show is, and you have to go to the fact that I don't watch it every no, day. That's more of a self deprecating thing. But when you're uh, here, it's why like you family. Yelling? You know? uh, yeah. It's like family. Yeah. But quickly. You're... There's no time. We were covering the Hootie story, right? The Hooties? Yeah, yeah. The, oh, the Hooties. Hooties and then the Hootie? Yeah, but breaking Hootie news, Darius Rucker was arrested on drug charges. In oh, yeah, no, I know. Did you see that? That's, that's honestly, the Darius Rucker arrest and then his ex, yes, who was a what comedian. Was you heard what A you comedian said. who I was, a, uh, well, a friend of mine was trying to fix me up with her. This is a long time ago. Um, she's, she's out there. I mean, she's a, you know, she's... You know, she's a fun. She fun, she leads with fun. You know. Yeah, I love um, what I love what she said. Yes, I've heard. All I can say is karma. Oh. <laughs> yeah, she was. She's not happy. That was not a happy breakup. Yeah, and so, then posted a bikini selfie mood when you hear that your d bag ex got arrested. Hashtag karma. She is oh, very uh, very attractive. <laughs> she's got a lot of uh, bikini shots, and she's very attractive that way. Uh, if you like that kind of thing. Uh, anyway, that's the hootie. Yeah, the hootie. If you want an update on that hootie, the hootie yeah. from Hootie and the Blowfish, I feel like the After Party Live is a good place to go for that. Yeah. You guys uh, cover that stuff, I think, pretty consistently. Um, 
All right. Now, without any further delay, we certainly delayed a, an, an immense amount already. But thank you for those updates and thank you for the SSL stuff. It's time on Fridays to do this. Friday, Fabulous Florida. It's time for Friday Fabulous Florida. There is a gigantic alligator in my kitchen. A look at the weirdest stories from our weirdest state. Let's start with a Florida woman. I know it's usually the guys, but let's start with a woman. What? She has found herself in police custody. Barged into a gas station while naked and drunk, everyone. That wow. is the Check. winning combination in Florida. Check. She threatened, according to staffers, to kill them with a peeler or corer knife. Oh. Celia Barrett, there she is, 35. Oh. Not uh, That's not her OnlyFans picture, but it <laughs> is uh, the only picture she is taking. The orange As she's jumpsuit booked gave in. it away. <laughs> yeah, the orange uh, she, the orange actually flatters her. But yeah. anyway, arrested, charged with two counts of aggravated assault, disorderly intoxication, criminal mischief, exposure of sexual organs, oh. and trespassing. Uh, this happened at um, the racetrack. You know, it's called racetrack. Uh, as you're aware, it's a like a convenience store um, oh. gas station place. As you're over aware. there, <laughs> it's insane. There. <laughs> it's insane. As opposed to like oh. a real racetrack. Gotcha. Um, and uh, she had, familiar. she was familiar to them because mm. she had previously trespassed back in November. She came she back. Has that look. She has yeah, that look. like I'm coming back uh, for revenge. <laughs> and she came back after taking six shots of liquor. Is what she told the cops. She was naked at the time of the incident, walked into waving, uh, t- uh, while waving a sharp edge peeler corer and threatening mm-hmm. staff with it. Uh, didn't request money from the cashier, but uh, was complaining about the fact that they had pressed charges before about her trespassing. And um, that's when she started to threaten the staff further. Well, she has money. I mean, look at that makeup. She, <laughs> there's a lot going on there. This is like central casting for a Florida woman. It is true. It it seems very, very on brand. Early (laughs) proclamations that we've got an early winner. Yeah. I have to say, the minute I saw uh, the headline, drunk, naked Florida woman wielding peeler knife, I felt that it might be the... Well, she um, counted how many shots and she remembered. That's impressive. Might be the winner. Yeah. Yeah. That is impressive. You're absolutely right. right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's continue with women in Florida. Florida mom is defending the ad she has on her car for her OnlyFans site, everyone. This after a complaint from parents at a Christian school. Yes. Yes. Hey, maybe it's a Christian OnlyFans site. Did any of you Christian parents go there and look? I didn't think so. Do they have that? No. No. A cent, well... You have to go there to know. (laughs) I'm not going to do that search. A Central Florida mom (laughs) saying now she's been forced to drop her kids off across the street (laughs) from their Christian school after concerns were raised about decals on her and her husband's vehicles advertising her her, uh, side hustle. This is a word from the Lord, and he's not happy. That's right. Liberty Christian Preparatory School in Tavares said that Michelle Klein's decals advertising her OnlyFans account are, quote, inappropriate for children. I don't know. The the decals aren't inappropriate. Maybe the site is. OnlyFans, of course, is a website that allows customers to pay for access to, quote, exclusive content that they won't find Mm. on other social media How do these good Christians know what it is? Well... I think the word, it, this is my they point, They should have John. thought it was just for sports fans. Maybe it right. was only fans. I mean, I understand that they know only fans is, you know. Well, they uh, shouldn't be Googling. Likely that. filled with sexual content, but they don't know that hers is that unless they actually go there. In any case, they've taken this a very strict action. She feels yeah. singled out. and she's, she's a moron. Yeah. I mean, um, you know the culture of your kid's school. 
And you know, when you, you know, you have your kid there, maybe you volunteer there, whatever, you know, these people aren't going to love your OnlyFans thing. So you slap that on the back of your SUV and roll up to the pickup line. What do you think's going to happen? Kim, are you slut shaming? Uh, maybe. Kim is really tough today. Ch-ch-ch-ch- she has yeah. uh, come down on uh, prosecutor Fonnie Willis. Yeah. And she has also come down on Michelle Klein. Now, there she is, Michelle Klein, if you're watching on YouTube. And that is her shot. And she is, um, uh, you know, she she has an attractive quality that people might find uh, something they want to check out more on their OnlyFans yeah. uh, site. Some so there it is. trashy tattoos, but she's cute. Yeah, exactly. Trashy hot. <laughs> and there you have it. <laughs> a Florida man demands a trial saying that the combos that he's purchased the combos are stuffed snacks Mm. they don't have enough cheese he feels as though the combo snacks as advertised don't actually pay off in cheese quantity there they are they're cheddar cheese snacks and in fort myers he has filed a federal lawsuit against the parent company of combo snacks saying they are deceptively marketed because they don't contain enough real cheese. Is it fake cheese? What is in no, there? No, look right in the front. It says filling made with real cheese. Can yeah. Oh. And uh, 240 calories. According to the label included in court documents, the main ingredients of the snack, <laughs> wheat flour, palm oil, dairy products, solids, carbohydrates, and cornstarch. That's healthy. <laughs> He's saying less than 2% of that is the cheese blend, as it's mm. called. And he wants to hold the company accountable. Alaskan bears are found more than 3,600 miles away from home in Florida. Why are you yelling? The Alaska (laughs) Department of Fish and Game told the sheriff's office that there are only about 3,500 Kodiak bears in existence. And they're the subspecies of the more well-known brown and grizzly bears. How do they get to Okaloosa County, Florida? They're native to southern Alaska. And they were wandering on a rural Florida roadway. A local resident alerted authorities. And the pair appeared healthy, even tried to climb into a responding patrol car. You can see the pictures of them. They are cute guys until they tear you to pieces. Maybe Maybe they're early for spring break. It's, it's cold <laughs> up there. It is. Uh, it's <laughs> Fabulous producer, John Daly. The bears were taken to a secure facility. Information regarding uh, this entire thing kept uh, very um, under the table. We don't really know what's going on. They're investigating how they got there. Um, and uh, again, Hitchhikes, they're 3,600 miles <laughs> away from home. Unless they're flight attendants for Alaskan. They think that it, they were... Bears that were kept in a nearby enclosure by a local resident. Mm. Again, this is crazy. I recommend yeah. to you again the movie, which I have recommended a long time ago. It's called The Elephant in the Living Room. Okay, It refers to people who have all of these exotic pets. Literally, one of them is an elephant. And people keep these things you know, for whatever crazy reason, and you begin to see like the bizarre... Psychic, psycho, uh, psychological issues that people have yeah. who have these things. Anyway, thirty five hundred um, Kodiak bears in existence, and um, you know, two of them are psychological there in- issues in Florida. Florida man, <laughs> um, Florida man allegedly chucks a chocolate egg at a Circle K employee. Oh no! And that was only their opener, Kim. Then he jumps over the counter and attacks the employee. This is in Tarpon Springs, Florida, not far from where my grandparents used to live there on the Gulf Coast. Ooh. A Florida man finding himself behind bars now. He, ch- he chucks this chocolate egg at the gas station attendant. Then he hops over the counter and attacks him. I mean, this is a, a clear case. When did this happen? This happened... Uh, it happened in Tarpon Springs. It happened, he's 27 years old. When did it happen, Albert? Kim here's wants my, to know. Here's my problem is, why are there chocolate eggs? I mean, it's not Easter yet. We haven't even had Valentine's Day. Oh, are these I Cadbury see. Cadbury cream eggs issue. from last year? Like, is it I old see. eggs? What's going oh. on? Oh, so Kim's problem is that yeah. these eggs shouldn't They're have fresh. been in the inventory at all. Huh. Yeah. Yeah, so January 30th was when the story, story was wow. published. Why January 30th. Chocolate that's eggs just in the a store. A couple of days ago. 
Yeah. You're getting ready, Kim. I guess. Look, uh, let me just say that kind of for me fault, anyway, then, and it? my family, <laughs> it's always chocolate egg season. Oh. So I completely understand. He does have a glamorous um, shot there. I think he goes to attractive prison. I agree. He yeah. looks good. He's a cute 27-year-old dude. And once he shakes this chocolate egg throwing and he's got some battery issues. charge, he's going to no. be in good shape. <laughs> he yeah, looks like he was up. proud of what he did. That like, jawline, the cheekbones. We found you throwing, we found you throwing <laughs> the chocolate eggs. He's like, yep, I did that. Yeah. But if there was ever a chocolate egg tossing competition he has yeah. video to uh, get into it the big ripoff of the snoop dog bobblehead from a restaurant it's a 1250 dollars snoop dog bobblehead i want that they have busted <laughs> this caper the dog napper d-o-double-g yeah, yo yo me. yo uh, it's a three and a half foot Snoop Dogg bobblehead taken from a Florida restaurant. And they had an immediate investigation. You can see the ripoff here. Oh. The guy just walks oh. out with it. Just did, that's a brazen do, do, theft. Do, 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 do. It, it just is. grabbed it and ran. Do, do, Not yeah. even ran, briskly walked right out. No, just, it's true. All ding brazen. Uh, according to the Lee County Sheriff's Office, the thief, 50-year-old Rocco John Benedetto, is now in custody. And Joe Box and Little is. Anthony. It does have a Joe Box and Anthony feel. I'll give you that. I have to compliment them on how clear their security cameras yeah. are. Yes, those are high res. I give you yeah. credit and for that. What's Surveillance footage showing there? the moment Benedetto took the $1,250 bobblehead. I wanted and, it, so I took it. Yeah, really wild. He must have spotted it and... Uh, now the Snoop D O Double G is back with. Although the you can tell restaurant. he's an amateur because he has his hat on backwards. He should yeah. have had it on the other way and lowered. Oh, that's right? such a good point. Uh, they you're did right. Have, they did have that pricey bobblehead very close to the exit. Look at that Benedetto. They that's the perp walk. Wow, yeah. he's sort of unapologetic. <laughs> yeah, it should have been uh, chained down. Yeah. Wow. I mean, I'm Mo Black's brother, Fat Andy. He could have been Fat Andy. I don't know. He's, he seems Fat Andy adjacent. Florida woman tries to kill her husband oh. over a postcard from a woman that he dated 60 years ago. I mean, what? I mean, it's a, I was it, really. Say postcard, really? Let's <laughs> let's let it go, okay ladies? Yeah. A North Miami Beach woman is accused of trying to kill her husband after he received a postcard from an ex-girlfriend from 60 years ago. Uh the domestic dispute erupted and turned physical. Bertha Yalter, 71, and her husband involved in this dispute after a woman he dated six decades ago sent him a postcard. Now, Yalter and her husband have been married for 52 years. Wow. <laughs> Seems like the insecurity can, mm. at this point, sort of be put in the back seat. But it was a fresh postcard, right? Yeah. What does she Yalter want? Yalter tried to lady? smother her husband with a pillow. Oh. And uh, and bit him. Yalter's husband, extremely fragile, had serious bruises, open cuts on both his arms and stomach area. He also had open bite marks. He was oh, bleeding. God. Uh. Yeah, the incident was captured on a cell phone, which was given to the Northern Miami Beach Police Department. Yeah, Bertha, chill, girl. Exactly. Yeah. Julie's yeah. right. This is crazy. Maybe Bertha was like, I knew it. I knew it. All She's facing trips. charges of attempted second-degree murder. Also, aggravated battery on a person 65 years or older. But, I mean, she tried to smother the guy with a pillow. That's pretty, uh, you know, there's no coming back from that. So, let's finish Florida with a gambling story. No, there you Please. go. Please. <laughs> a Florida man gets a sentence for stealing a, uh, a bunch of tuition uh -oh. that was um, earmarked for uh, a sports camp. And he used the money to pay for gambling, everybody. Yeah, gambling go. is a thing. Also, uh, some plastic surgery he got. <laughs> it's Florida. Medi, Medi Belhassan, who's 53, of Tampa, Florida, sentenced to prison for stealing the tuition from hundreds of families planning to send their kids to sports camps. Belhassan falsely claimed that he would operate MB sports camps at a Boston-area college starting in the fall. Found guilty on two counts of wire fraud. He also got a sentence of two years of supervised release. 
he uh, he took the money, and he, uh, of course, by the way, he had no permitting for operating a camp or anything. So it's all just marketing. He collected funds, promoted, and then he used those funds from 300 families that he got to donate to, again, uh, gamble and uh, spent the money on uh, flights to Vegas and also entertainment, hotels. And from what I've seen, plastic surgery is a gamble, said somebody. <laughs> That's right. Um, and, and a bit of plastic surgery. So you, ne you never know when you need a little tuck here or a little lift there. So uh, that is our group. There is assault. There is a, a pillow smothering. Nudity, even. <laughs> Nudity. There's a lot there. I will remind you, we don't like to pick a favorite, but we do have to pick a favorite required by the bylaws of the show to do it. And so you as a listener viewer, please weigh in. If you're watching in uh, replay, which most people do watch in delay, please indicate your favorite. We always do keep track. For example, if you like the drunk, naked Florida woman, we see that you liked it in replay. You, we see your comment. We go, ah, maybe we should have more drunk, naked Florida women stories. People seem to like those. Anyway, <laughs> drunk, naked Florida woman wielding a peeler knife barges into that gas station, threatens yeah. to kill the staff. Yeah. The Florida mom defending her OnlyFans ad on her car after she got mm. complaints from the Christian school at which she was dropping off her kids. The Florida man demanding a trial, saying that combo snacks don't have enough cheese, even though they call them cheesy. Alaskan bears found more than 3,600 miles from home in Florida. A Florida man chucking a chocolate egg at a Circle K employee, then he hops over the counter to attack him. The Florida man who was caught stealing that $1,250 Snoop Dogg bobblehead from a restaurant the Florida woman who tried to smother her husband with a pillow because he got a postcard from a woman that he dated 60 years ago. And the Florida man finally getting his sentence for stealing sports camp tuitions to pay for sports-related uh, gambling and sports-related plastic surgery. I wonder what leads in the chat, Albert. I think the obvious pick. I think we could all yeah. we're, we're all leaning towards the nude peeler knife threat. Yes, drunk mm -hmm. naked woman. Yeah, mm -hmm. that always right. Mm -hmm. um, you could do a movie called Drunk Naked Florida Woman. It would probably do okay at the box office this weekend. I never. Um, <laughs> John's looking for security video of the drunk naked girl. Yeah, do we I'm have sure any he that? is. No? I'm yeah. sure he is. We gave you the yeah. we gave you her booking photo, which is all we have for you. Uh, well, we must pick a favorite, and so we will. We'll start with fabulous producer John Daly. Fabulous Daly. producer yeah. John Daly. I do like the Alaska Bears, not the part of them being taken, but the fact that they're in Florida, and I like to think on vacation. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but we have to go with the naked woman, and I think yeah. maybe she is trying out for a part. Oh, yeah. Maybe she's trying to join SAG. You never know. I mean, she could pivot. She yeah. could pivot. Yeah. I like this poo-poo platter, though, uh, this week. Uh, how, you know, it is quite, it's very, the, uh, Friday Fabulous Florida is curated by Albert and he's done a fine job. In, in fact, Albert, let's ask you, what's your favorite this Albert, week? thank you. I like, there's multiple layers to what I like. I like the OnlyFans mom because, yeah. uh, multiple reasons, obviously Christian school, guerrilla marketing on the car. Like that's very old school and very random. Uh, th probably the psychological bullying that might be happening towards the, the poor child, and then also the poor the uh, the producer or intern who had to research the B roll for the OnlyFans had to go on the OnlyFans <laughs> to Good get point. that footage. Yes, Albert, I didn't even think of Albert that. Albert goes for the milf. Right? Yeah, no, but that, that, he's right though. <laughs> that when local news reported it, they had to have like video that was acceptable from her OnlyFans site, so somebody actually had to go on it. That's they probably a very, already uh, had it. You know, yeah, standing by. <laughs> uh, very good. All right. That's the uh, drunk and naked Florida woman. What with a multi-layered aspect to it that maybe others missed. Uh, Kim, what's your favorite, please? Kim, I was going to go drunk naked woman, but now I feel like I need to shake it up a little bit. Oh. And I need to pick the Snoop Dogg bobblehead. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. The guy walked out with the, uh, yeah. the Snoop Dogg bobblehead. He's a huh? smooth criminal. $1,250 <laughs> Snoop Dogg bobblehead. Yeah. Yeah. 
You kind of defended well, him, Kim. You said you you said that the Snoop Dogg thing was a little close to the door. It was close to the you door. Did, <laughs> that's true. But the Fannie Willis thing was not okay. And uh, the, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Kim's having a moment today. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. Uh, you guys it's their are as fault. Judgy as she's I a, am, I don't know. She's a victim. She's a victim shamer. Um, and uh, there are no right answers, but the right answer is drunk, naked Florida woman. Uh, we are, that is, uh, thank you um, very much. Uh, that's Friday Fabulous Florida for today. This has been Friday Fabulous Florida. There is a gigantic alligator in my kitchen. Y'all come back now, here. Yeah? Well, it is with the greatest sadness that we say a farewell to fabulous, fabulous producer, producer John, John Daly. Daly, but you can find him, as I say, on the After Party Live, which yep. uh, is on every day. They usually we'll start right after right this show we'll or live. sometimes even before the show ends over on the After Party Live channel. Well, thank you uh, for the compliments. We appreciate it. And as yeah. Kim now knows and realizes, you are a two-time Emmy winner, so that means a lot coming from you. Thank two you, John. Time. I didn't know he had two Emmys. Oh, really? my what? God. Christ, do your homework, Kim. Know, no, Emmy. Do you know who I am? I don't get I'm kind it. of a big deal. Kim just All right. rolls up. Why aren't uh, the Emmys on the shelf behind you if they're Yeah, so I should put them out there. My bad. I'm sorry. He's a yeah. humble man. He thank you. Thank you, yeah. John. We need more John Daly on this yeah. show. Uh, thank you, John. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I come from a regular stock. So. The Mark Thompson Show. On Fridays, this guy joins us. Man, you are all over the world, uh, Michael Shore, with these um, conversations you have with Trump supporters. And you do it in a way that is really provocative and interesting. I know you probably don't want to be known for this, but it's still kind of a cool little side thing. Uh, he's a guy who has forgotten more about politics than most of us will ever know. How about it for Michael Shore? Yeah, you know, if you want to see Mark's Emmys, just go to the sports book at Caesar's Palace. <laughs> uh, 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 yeah, yeah. I mean, these, uh, it's, it's not that I don't want to be doing it. It's that there's, you know, there, there are smarter things to be doing. Right. That's my point. I mean, you're right. a, a guy with tremendous but, depth when it comes to politics and this is sort of, a, but to but be it fair, sheds a light, you know, it really yes. does tell a story, which I, and, and it's clearly an important story because it elected a president and it may again. So exactly. Uh, Albert play a little bit of the great Michael Shore talking to a couple of these people, um, about Donald Trump. And I think this is in the context of, his legal issues and whether they would that the outcome of his uh, trials would in any way affect their disposition toward voting for him. Go ahead, Albert. If he's convicted on any of those indictments, does that change your support for him? Absolutely not. Because when, when you look at why they're attacking him and when you look at the other side as well and how, you know, Hunter Biden and uh, the Clintons, you know, I could name others, but, uh, but ma'am, Hunter Biden indicted as well uh, and also not the president. Correct, but also they know how to play the game, and so do we. So, if he's convicted on any of these ninety-one indictments, would that change your mind at all? Uh, no, oh, absolutely not. Uh, this this is political persecution. There, that's all there is to it. That's all there is to it. If Donald Trump is indicted, is convicted for what he's been indicted for, would he lose your support? Um, that's a hard question to ask. Come back to you. No, he would not lose my support. I think that what we're seeing right now is illegitimate lawfare being waged in the country. I don't think that we are seeing a legitimate trial play out. Um, all of these charges are being waged against Donald Trump. But what we see is similar charges being brought against Biden and his family, his dealings with China, Ukraine and other countries, uh, Hunter Biden and his uh, sketchy past. An innocent man, if he's convicted of any of these 91 indictments, does that change? No, no. The What's going on right now legally is a sham. I mean, ha have you seen the latest of what's coming out in Atlanta with the DA um, and her boyfriend? I mean, it's all corruption. It's all, I mean, the elite simply want all the money, all the power, and the rest of us are just pawns. All right, yeah, that's uh, that's good. Go but it, it's just know. interesting that, that, that Donald Trump, and this is his uh, the, the sleight of hand that's bizarre to me, he... Uh, as that guy has sort of suggested, doesn't come out as one of the elite. It's weird, like this guy can talk about the elite, they're getting what they want, when everyone that Donald Trump surrounds himself with and that he they populated his administration with the last time, they're yeah, part of that elite, I think, arguably. 
Yeah, and not not to mention, I, you know, that they go to the Hunter Biden thing, and one person said, "What about the charges against Joe Biden?" Later on, I don't know if it's in that clip that we just saw or not, but I say there are no charges against Joe Biden, and then they say, "Well, there should be, right?" Well, but there aren't. So there is this disconnect from that, and the idea that whatever is happening against the other side is perfectly legitimate, right? So the charges and and uh, allegations, let's say, against Biden um, are as as uh, those are, should be taken seriously. What shouldn't be taken seriously is anything against Donald Trump. Yeah, I have no idea how Michael keeps a sane mind after speaking with these people. But you know, it's interesting. Thank you, Walnut Creek Adult Softball. But I will say uh, this about the work you do. Uh, and then I want to move on because I do want to talk about Fonnie Willis. And I want to talk about this new uh, poll in the swing states. But the work you do, you do it very um, deftly because you do push back on them, but you don't push back in a hostile way and you don't, uh, you don't say, well, that's ridiculous. Or don't you see the contradiction you, you suggest it in all of these ways uh, that has to be increasingly challenging, honestly. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, these are people who like combat and I I'm somebody who doesn't generally, but, but also you're not going to get what you want getting combative with them. You'll get something, but you're not going to get what I want, which is to sort of shine a light onto what you know, sort of moves these people. Uh, you know, even w w every time I ask somebody about Donald Trump and the charges against him and, and the, and the, you know, the convictions and the indictments and all that, um, I always say, you know, he's an innocent man right now, but if he's convicted on any of these 91 charges, would that change you? So you're right. You're, you're showing something that they want to hear, which is that he is innocent. innocent I see. I see. And so it becomes a safe place for them to talk about what it is that they want to talk about. So I, you know, it's, I, I've gotten used to doing it that way now and it, it's uh, it works. So it's, uh, it works and it's become, I mean, I'm seeing it everywhere. It was on MSNBC the other night. It, it, it's been, um, it's on CNN. I mean, in other words, this stuff, it's on TYT. That's the dedicated place where all this stuff, you can watch it in long form and it really breathes and you really get a feel for it in the TYT videos. But I'm just suggesting that your work, which again is, uh, you know, the the real body of work you have is as a political an analyst and reporter, but, and this is certainly, you know, kind of uh, adjunct category, yeah. but well, uh, it, it's-, it's immersion, makes you, immersion makes you better at, anything you do. So I'm, I've now been sort of embedded with these people several times, many, many, many times. And, uh, and it, it does, you know, it, it lets you understand what's, what's going on out there, but you can't be fooled by it either. You know, it's Michael, not. have you had any, uh, social interactions with any of these people away from the uh, rally? Do you ever say, Hey, you know, when the rally's done, you want to go get a cocktail? <laughs> uh, you saw those two ladies there? <laughs> no. That's what made me ask. No, no. Yeah. Um, no they're, they're, as a matter of fact, there's one guy who I interviewed, he and his wife in Iowa, who, um, you know, he was very, very in the Trump camp, but he was really nice and he was reasoned about it. And it was a time when I was asking them what their favorite books and movies are. And very few of them could come up with a book or a movie, uh, which was surprising. Um, but he, he said the princess bride and so did his wife. They, they were. Um, and so I talked to them for a while and they were very Iowa nice. And then he sent he asked for my information. He sent me a text about some places to eat in the neighborhood. And then he said, whenever you're in town, come by the farm and we'll have a toddy, whether it's summer or not. And we can talk about anything but politics. So, I mean, wow, that's very really cool, good. man. I love hearing that. I well, love hearing his that. His name's Ed. And by the way, I would love to go to Ed's and, and you know, sure. A toddy I mean, a lot of these people are, are nice people. You want to, they are wildly misguided and, you know, in the thrall of this guy in this cultish way. But, um, and yeah. they're also feeling they're feeling left out. I think this is what we can you know pivot and uh, on this. Yeah. They're feeling left out of the political process. They're feeling as though their concerns are not being represented by this is real or imagined. This is their feeling. I think yeah, imagine because never before have they been more part of the the process and mass. I mean, I'm not talking about Ed and the toddy on the farm, but. I'm talking about like this, these voices have not been a part of the political conversation in any greater way than they are now. And so, you know, th their gripes are gone. So to this poll, this is in the swing states and the CNN poll shows former president Donald Trump narrowly ahead of president Joe Biden. The yeah poll highlighting voters conflicted feelings about both of these guys 
Um, majorities of Democrats and Republicans say they'd be satisfied if their party's candidate won. Um, there also, though, at the same time, is a sizable majority, a, a, a sizable minority, I should say, of, of these same polled people who say, I wish there was another option besides uh, Trump or Biden. 49% of registered voters say they would back Trump if an election between the two were held today, while 45% support Biden. 5% say they'd vote for someone else. So that's those are similar numbers to the fall numbers in that same demographic group, you know. Uh, so nothing has really changed. It's interesting, and I thought this is instructive from your video, that specific video that we just saw. Nothing has changed even as his legal travails change. So even as Trump has more of this legal stuff stick to him, if you want to think of it that way, it doesn't change people's disposition toward voting. Right. It, well, you know, uh, we're, we're, we're talking when we're there, and it's important to point this out. We're not just talking to Republican voters out to see, you know, a candidate on the stump. We're talking to people who are, you know, dyed in the wool devotees of this man. And, and the, whether you want to call it a cult or not, there, there is certainly something um, Grateful Dead like about it. I mean, these people follow him from appearance to appearance, and these are the people who are not going to waver. They're going to stand by him. There exists certainly uh, a group of Republicans and a sizable group of Republicans who will say that they a don't want to vote for Donald Trump, and if he's convicted, they don't want to deal with that kind of a candidate or or a president. So. Um, there's a difference. It may be subtle, but it does. You know, the people I speak to are, are unmoved by it. And these numbers haven't moved, though. There hasn't been tremendous amount that has happened since the last poll, which, um, which was late last year, a similar poll um, that has happened legally. I mean, it's just gone on. And one thing I think if you're President Biden and his campaign, I think you're encouraged by the fact that you haven't slipped any more. So it, it means that this constant campaign that Trump has been running out there on the stump, uh, in front of everybody, on TV, getting PR, you know, they say bad publicity uh, is better than no publicity. He's out there and out front and he hasn't moved up. Now, again, that's that's a glass half full if you're a Biden supporter. But the fact that, that, that the president hasn't really begun running for president yet, or maybe he's just starting to now, means that there's a lot of room to make up. And you looked at the national poll this week from Quinnipiac polling, um, and they they showed that Biden's up 6% nationwide on Trump. So uh, I think that there are glimmers of good news um, that come out of out of these polls for the president. And I think that a little bit of frustration for Trump, though, he is holding steady. And I think when you're a candidate uh, who is up by four points and you haven't lost that margin, you've got to be happy about that as well. I'll get to the Georgia thing in a second, but I just still want to uh, kick around on this poll for one more second. Um, Nikki Haley uh, is also showing up in this. And yeah. it's not, I mean, a big showing, but it's something, 16% say they'd be enthusiastic about uh, her should she become the next uh, president. But among Republican and Republican-leaning voters, her favorability rating is way behind Trump's. 31% have a favorable view of, of Haley, compared with 71% of Republican-leaning voters yeah. uh, and their positive view of Trump. So she's not really relevant to the likely outcome. Which isn't terribly surprising I, when you look at the results. I mean, she stood for election in the primary now twice, right? Once in Iowa, where she came in third to Ron DeSantis, who days later dropped out of the race. And once in New Hampshire, where she was within, it was thought, three points of the former president uh, weeks ago. And then lost by about eleven percent. People were saying, "Oh, that's a you know, it's a good result that, 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 that he, Trump only beat her by eleven percent." Uh, that's not. I mean, he, she lost by eleven percent. She was the only person on the ballot, so it's not surprising she's going to go to South Carolina, her home state, and not do as well as the governor of a home state should do. And then there's going to be a reckoning in the Republican Party for a little while about what happens. I mean, I can't see uh, any argument for Haley staying in the race if she loses badly in her own home state I mean, where does she go from there but she could wait it out and see what happens with uh some of the legal um the battles that the former president's fighting right now but i i, I don't know i mean the, the republican party has a split in it but it's not 50 50. And this is interesting and it does lead me to my next question just give me the math says republican strategy now is to assist rfk jr and Cor Cor uh, cornell west to, uh, to divert votes from uh biden uh, I don't know if that's their strategy, but it is, 
I think, worth noting on the Democrat side, and it may not take the form of these third party candidates. It may take the form of just a lack of voter enthusiasm for Biden or the Middle East being an increasing issue that divides Democrats, that Biden doesn't get the solidarity on the Democratic side that he got in 2020. Can you speak to that? Well, I mean, it's not surprising he doesn't get the solidarity. He's been president. People have formed opinions about him. Uh, Trump as president is different than Trump as candidate. But again, I I keep pointing to the fact that he has not that this campaign has not begun in earnest. So the president has been able to define himself and his campaign and his surrogates haven't been able to define the race yet as uh, us versus them. And and here's what we have done since we've been there. I mean, the, the president's numbers on the economy, not good in this poll, but the, pre- the numbers on the economy are better. When he starts talking about it and people start pointing to that, it's going to help. Is it going to put him over? No, there's no delusion here. I mean, it, it's going to help, though. It's it's going to narrow the gap in certain places when he starts running a campaign and there are ads up there. And, you know, again, uh, abortion is going to be a big part of this campaign. So uh, that was just a so well put. I do want to note one last thing on the GOP side, and then I will get to Georgia. And that yeah, yeah. is... Uh, enthusiasm. The poll is saying through its results that on the Republican side, notwithstanding the people that Michael Shore speaks to, the enthusiasm is lagging a bit on the Republican side. Again, according to the poll, 63% of Republican aligned voters say they are extremely motivated to vote in the 2024 presidential election. 63%. Well, it's down 71% is what the results were in the fall. So it's softening. Uh, And I'm wondering, I mean, if, you know, we talk a lot about there's not enthusiasm or the Democrats are split, but there's not a lot of enthusiasm for Trump also among the GOP. I I think they hold their nose maybe and pull the lever a little more than the Democrats do, but they're, they're beginning to lack enthusiasm over there also. Well, I mean, I think sometimes, I mean, the polls are important. I like polls and people who are pollsters are are very smart and they're trying to adapt to the way polling is done and, and all of that. So tip of the hat to them. But this is just affirming of what anybody could guess, right? I mean, these are two, okay. <laughs> like a 77 year old and an 81 year old, uh, two, two candidates uh, who we know very well, who neither party loves the fact that they this is the their standard bearer right now to to the nth degree that certainly they don't love that so yeah of course there's going to be a little bit of lack of enthusiasm as it gets closer to the election and the lines are drawn and the other side is defined by the side you support it's going to increase enthusiasm because a choice has to be made but i you know i i'm not surprised at all by by the fact that there's less enthusiasm who i'm i'm a reporter i'm less enthusiastic about covering this right <laughs> So I think there's a malaise about this right now. All right. Uh, malaise is a dang word, certainly. All right. The prosecutor in the Trump-Georgia case, this is a critical case, and Fannie Willis now acknowledging a relationship with Nathan Wade. Um, yeah. It, She says, followed a timeline that, you know, he wasn't hired because of the relationship. The relationship uh, occurred and began after he was already working, they were working together as colleagues. Um, Speak to the political effects. Um, It it was even noted by one of the people you spoke with. And then just speak to sort of this as a practical matter. You know, I I can't, I I can't speak to the practical matter, right? I mean, my, my hunch is that it probably doesn't matter. But anytime you're able to point to the prosecution if you're the defense and see something that is, you know, that uh, pushes the lines of, uh, of integrity, then that's a good, that's a plus for your side. But I, I don't, I don't know how it affects the meat of what's there. I mean, that's in evidence. Yeah. It, the prosecution was brought by, by Fonnie Willis. Uh, it has been organized. It has been, you know, um, I, I think probably prosecuted in the, the, the real sense of the word by Fonnie Willis and her office. But it doesn't mean that any other prosecutor wouldn't be able to do it. And the evidence speaks for itself. And I think we've heard a lot of the evidence and whether or not it implicates the president directly, we don't know till there's a trial. But I, I, I think, or the former president, I think though that, you know, any questionability about 
the, the integrity of the other side in a legal case is is important for the you know for both sides. Yeah, we had uh, David Katz on, the former federal prosecutor, yesterday, and he's sort of anticipating that this is going to become something. He said, "Look, this isn't going to derail the trial." He said, "They can be, they can be all sorts of reconfigurations of who it represents." the prosecution and in that office as the trial continues. I mean, it's not going to, it doesn't just go away because of this. No, uh, so. it doesn't. And, and I mean, he knows better than I, but, but it, it seems like that that's really the case here. It, it, this is a case on evidence. They wouldn't have brought the case if there wasn't sufficient evidence. We as a public have heard a lot of those phone calls, uh, a lot of the, um, we've seen a lot of the interactions uh, over email. So I think there's there's reason to believe there's a solid case here, whether it's a slam dunk or not. I, I just don't, you know, it doesn't help the case that this happened with Bonnie Willis. I don't think it derails it entirely. Either. Now I want you to get into the Wayback Machine as our final story, Michael. The okay. Wayback Machine to 2018 when Kirsten Cinema was crusading against politicians cashing in on political office. She actually introduced a bill seeking to crack down on lawmakers' use of public funds for first-class air travel, among other sort of luxuries that politicians and other lawmakers enjoy. Well, tell me a story, Mark. Well, apparently, uh, Kirsten Cinema is enjoying private luxury travel and... Uh, and she is, and this is what I want to get to you, of she's spending, first of all, $210,000 in taxpayer funds on these private chartered air travel uh, flights since 2020. Uh, but my question to you, and she stays at five-star European hotels, luxury vehicles, also rented during this time, first-class airfare. She um, uh, has stayed in these uh, gorgeous, plush West Coast vineyards. All of this um, now spending donor money, okay? Right. Uh, and you can remind us, I think this is true, Michael Shore, should she decide not to run for office? And I want to ask you what her you know, general express plans are, which way she's leaning. She can take a lot of that donor money, right? Isn't that if it's uh, if she's yeah. got a pack, it's, I think the pack's worth $11 million. She can take well, every 11, every dollar of that $11 million with her, right? Well, the pack, I mean, the pack stays where it is, but she can take the money, um, the campaign funds that the campaign given. funds. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, I misspoke. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. And and those those funds can stay there, but I mean it's it's not she doesn't she can't just go to you know Paris with that money. I mean it, you know there there's uh, there's misuse of campaign funds or FEC laws uh, that she would have to follow. Uh, I think as a sitting senator, it kind of blurs it a little bit because if she's saying she's on official state business and choosing to stay where she's staying on the money, I mean it's just unseemly. I don't know that it's illegal, but it's it just shows how politics is oh no it's it, it, it's it's yeah. just it's it's hypocrisy yeah, it's and hypocrisy. It, but yeah, there's not yeah. there's not yeah. illegal yeah um, we don't know i mean as far as we know it's not illegal nobody's saying that it that it is or that she broke any laws but i i you know look she's in a uh, the independent party must be outraged over this there there's uh <laughs> she's uh she's left the, the democrats ruben gallego's running for that seat you know and, and so it's going to be the uh, a situation where um she's either going to divide the democrats or not be a part of that race and I, again i don't know what her plans are her plans are to run for re-election for her seat clearly but uh, i don't know how much time and how long she'll remain in the race yeah the deadline to file for re-election is april 8th and uh, she's only raised about six hundred thousand uh, dollars which seems like a lot of money but it's it's not for compared US to seat, it's not at all i mean that for mm -hmm house seat in the competitive race that's not even a ton of money i mean the spending i'm going to talk more about this next week but the spending that kirsten cinema has done with pac money it was pac money that paid for a lot of her this uh, luxury travel and uh she has yeah. three hundred thousand dollars in security and all this other stuff it's very um she's very spendy i'll just say that yeah uh, well, the pack money is again like the, like we're saying it's really it's it's really ugly it's really hypocritical um but it's, you know, it's a choice she's made. Yeah. Uh, well, Michael, I'm glad you've made the choice to be with us today. And uh, I always enjoy our time. So thank you so much I, for being here. Find yeah, sure. Michael Shore everywhere, all over TYT and uh, beyond. And as I say, he's showing up on MSNBC and elsewhere. So um, 
I know it won't be long before you, you know, tender your regi- resignation and I'm uh, y- yet again. We've, we, we're a launch pad. Do you see the Mark Thompson show bump you're getting, Michael? No, no, it's, it's, it's uh, hard. You know, the number of people that, that point to that. It's, yeah. uh, you know, yeah. it's, you yeah, wouldn't prepare be, for more. Wouldn't yeah. be here were it not for. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Thank you. Exactly. Michael Shore, everyone. Thanks, Michael. Yeah. Bye bye. The Mark Thompson Show. How about a little news from Kim? A turbo newscast, and then the great culture blaster Michael Snyder will join us with uh, movies and such. Smash the like button Smash like it a boss. With your iron rod. Smash it for Michael Shore. Smash, Smash it that. With your iron rod. Yeah. And uh, Kim's news, and then the culture blaster. Mark Thompson Show. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Shadow Stevens. This is the Mark Thompson Show. Keep it to yourself. Who's Mark Thompson? On the Mark Thompson Show, I'm Kim McAllister, and this report is sponsored by CoachellaValleyCoffee.com. Uh, President Joe Biden is set to visit California and Nevada this weekend. The White House says the president will be in Los Angeles tomorrow. While there, Deadline reports that President Biden will be meeting with black leaders in the entertainment industry as they prepare for the Grammys. Biden's campaign is planning to run ads during the Grammys that spotlight abortion rights. The president and the first lady will then travel to Las Vegas on Sunday. Nevada has its Democratic presidential primary on Tuesday. Vice President Kamala Harris visited Sacramento last week to raise funds for the Biden-Harris campaign. I don't know if you heard this story, uh, Mark, but actor Carl Weathers has passed away at the age of 76. Weathers, best known for starring as Apollo Creed in the first four movies, uh, Rocky movies. Here's a little bit of sound from, oh, I thought I might have some sound from the Rocky movies. Let me see if I can play it for you. Um, but yeah, he's passed away again at the age of 76. Mm, no, yeah, let's tread yeah. lightly with that, Kim. I don't no wanna... sound. No sound it is. In a statement, his family said he died in his sleep on Thursday. Weathers also appeared in Happy Gilmore. Remember that with the hand? Predator. Yeah, he was Chubbs. Yeah. yeah, he was. Um, he was also in the movie Predator. Here's a more recent picture of him as well. Yeah, there it is. Uh, he was also in Action Jackson. More recently, he played uh, Grief Karga in the hit Star Wars series, The Mandalorian. So he's been doing a lot. And again, uh, actor Carl Weathers is dead at the age of 76. Los Angeles could see more than five inches of rain and eight inches of rain could hit areas from, uh, San, they say, uh, San Diego to Monterey. This is a big storm moving in. Uh, the late Saturday into early Wednesday is when it's pro- uh, projected to hit. A Pineapple Express heading to California, forecasters say, could have uh, life-threatening impacts as well. The storm could also cause mudslides and power outages, heavy snow in the mountains. We've been getting pummeled with rain especially here in the North Bay. I've heard it on and off this morning. But Los Angeles getting ready to uh, welcome the storm in this area. Again, San Diego to Monterey in the Central California area late Saturday into early Wednesday. An hours-long standoff at a U.S.-owned Procter & Gamble factory in Turkey. It has now ended with everyone safe. Thank goodness. Uh, The two gunmen described as pro-Hamas suicide bombers stormed this factory Thursday and they took seven hostages. Uh, Police staged a raid where the pair uh, were apparently taking a bathroom break and they took them into custody then. New polling in the California U.S. Senate race shows a clear leader and a new tie at second place as well. Congressman Adam Schiff still in the lead, according to the new California elections policy poll released late this week. The Burbank Democrat garnered 25 percent support of those surveyed. Democratic Congresswoman Katie Porter is even with Republican Steve Garvey, uh, an evening out of numbers after Garvey surged ahead of Porter in a January 
January poll. They both hold 15 percent support. And Democratic Representative Barbara Lee, the only other contender with a sizable amount of support at 7 percent. Meta is reporting profits that are more than triple what they were a year ago. Fourth quarter profit topped $14 billion versus $4.65 billion in the previous uh, fourth quarter. The social media giant also announcing they'll be paying dividends of 50 cents per share in March. And it is the second round of the Pebble Beach Pro-Am kicking off this morning. This year, fans are noticing some big changes. The amateur players get two days to compete instead of three on what's considered one of the best golf courses on the PGA Tour. The group has been cut down to 80 as well, with no celebrities in the mix. The number of pros also limited to 80, and the prize money has increased as well. Uh, this report is sponsored by CoachellaValleyCoffee.com. Mm. It truly is a place yes, is. to get a slice of heaven oh, slice in of your heaven. cup. Mm-hmm. Oh, I like that, a slice of heaven in your cup. Slice of heaven in your cup. I think they should use cup. that. Yeah, mm. I think it's good. You got your Mark Thompson Show coffee mug. You got a little Coachella Valley coffee. You got maybe some tea in there. It's a good rainy day, right? Yeah. I think yeah, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I Gotta... really, uh, I I like it rainy day or sunny day. Yeah. I, I'm a, I'm a <laughs> real, days. I'm a Every huge day. fan. Yes. Well, that's why uh, Michael Snyder pops by the Mark Thompson studio because the Coachella Valley coffee is right outside the studio in the green room and everyone's sucking it up out there. You can yeah. find a huge... <laughs> Find a huge selection of coffees and amazing teas. <laughs> CoachellaValleyCoffee.com. Hey, it's George Santos here. Yeah, George Santos will be by soon. All right. Yeah. Get your exclusive 10% discount just for being a Mark Thompson show What's listener. that, Michael? You have uh, a... No, no, it's absolutely true. She's, yeah. she's Kim, right. She's right. Wait, wait, wait. It. Hold on a second. I know I'm not on screen, but. Yeah, he's taking a sip right now. <sighs> Yeah, this is a stuff. factual newscast. You see yeah, this? He loves it. Yeah. He loves that Coachella Valley coffee. I do. You should uh, truly. If you haven't, try it. CoachellaValleyCoffee.com. And when you check out, do use the discount code MarkT. You'll get 10% off. Mark it's pretty T, great. It check yeah. out. It's worth yeah. it. And it's uh, it's just a, definitely a way to splurge. As a matter of fact, Ms. Organic said earlier, I ordered my Coachella Valley coffee today. Love it. Well Ms. Done. Organic. Cheers Love to you, it. Ms. Organic. There you are. Yeah. Thank There's you never for supporting been anything our sponsor. Like this. Yes. Very, very good. I'm Kim McAllister. This mm. is The Mark Thompson Show. Yeah. <laughs> The Mark Thompson Show. My wife wants some vegetables for crudite. I was a basketball referee. Feels great, baby. He's Mark Thompson. It's unbelievably offensive. What he's got going here is a situation. I was fortunate. Everyone I worked with made me better at my job. You are a cover-up artist and you are a liar. Yeah, I am a happy, 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 happy on this Friday. And I'm glad you joined us. By the way, we've addressed this, but I will remind you that our website, the parent website, from which all the holiness emanates, themarkthompsonshow.com, has had some hiccup. It needs an SSL something. Uh, And I will be on the phone to GoDaddy. (laughs) Because I'm not on the phone to enough tech support and other institutions. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> they should call it Hoosier Daddy. But Hoosier anyway, Daddy. talk to Danica yeah. Patrick, Mark. You remember those every like every Super Bowl? Oh yeah, she Danica used Patrick to be the Mark. spokesperson for Go yeah. Daddy. That's right. I'm yeah, Mark the- Thompson. I will only speak with Danica. Yes, I know Danica Patrick, <laughs> and she told me to call. So uh, give us a few hours, and hopefully that will be resolved. But uh, it's a great way to support the show, and thank you everybody who does. Now uh, on Fridays, one of the things I do most look forward to is a look up for Pinky Cerritos. Hey, sorry, Michael. I've got to just acknowledge Pinky. Pinky, big shout out. Big shout out. And with the rainbows and popcorn, Pinky is suggesting that Pinky is looking forward to this guy who does come and go on a rainbow. How he does it, the great Michael Snyder, everyone, the culture blaster he's called. Happy Friday to all. Yes. To you, Mark. To Thank you. To Kim to Albert, to Tony, wherever wow. he is, to Kim's yeah. husband, yes, working hard David, behind yes. the scenes to, I don't know, put plugs in. I, I, He's I trying know. to 
uh, I guess, uh, plug a leak, which is a, a, an internet leak. Our tech kings are hard at work on the job. And by the way, congratulations. Not only did you break 20,000 subscribers yes, sir. this week, but the surge continues. You're above 23 now, I think. And yeah, 23,000 subscribers. It's, it's really rolling. Our, if you look at the pie show. chart or one of those like graphs, it looks like there's <laughs> a big jack up as the, yeah, suddenly it's a, it's a mountain, a mountain right, of the subscribers. The hockey stick uh, graph. You're I, absolutely right. I am totally thrilled. Thank and of you. course, I'm also thrilled about my 49ers being uh, in the, the Super, Super Bowl, Bowl. oh, yeah. the tension was so massive. And by the way, for the Super Bowl, yeah. I am introducing uh, at the party um, a special cocktail, the Coachella Tenuta Spritzer, which is <laughs> kind of a liquid speedball that honors both of your major sponsors. Thank and you very much. It's going to be. Oh, I'm telling oh, wow. you, I've I've road tested Coachella this thing. Coachella Tenuta Speedball. Oh, yeah. the Spritzer. As the Spritzer, spritzer is great. Spritzer, sorry. Yeah, it was yeah. A speed liquid it's, speedball. It's a liquid spritzer. speedball spritzer. Okay. I, you know, by the way, um, I'm. Really really uh, excited about the confused maggots who are going to tune in to CBS on Sunday, expecting to see the Super Bowl, uh, you know, a week early and uh, sneer at Taylor Swift for 30 seconds uh, when she's on screen. And they're going to be in a tizzy because it's the Grammys and Taylor is going to be all over their screen. No, that's right. You won't right. be able to escape Taylor Swift on CBS this yeah, coming the Sunday. The actual Super Bowl is a week from Sunday. A week. And I hear that CBS, since they're covering it, um, are uh, forcing the Grammys, since they're also doing the Grammys, to add a category "Best Nip Slip" at a halftime show. And I'm, I, you so know, I, I know guess it's in retrospect or something. I don't know how it's no. going to work. All right, uh, Michael, can we get on to the movies, please? Although I appreciate all this topical material. Well, how can you call it topical material when I live and breathe the 49ers? It is and true. I'm so thrilled yeah. about there. We'll talk about that if we have a little time at the end. But all let's right. talk about movies. You know, there are. Moments of inspiration and jaw-dropping action sequences, one in particular that was so cool. Uh, and there's gorgeous money on the screen art direction and surprising turns and some high-grade actors doing what they do. But Argyle, mm -hmm. which is the latest spy spoof from director Matthew Vaughn of the similarly jocular Kingsman franchise, Joculars are doing well. as yeah. well as Kick-Ass, Stardust, and his first and still best movie, Layer Cake, is so chaotic. This movie, Argyle, is so chaotic, uh, and a little too clever for its own good, and a bit too long at two hours and 20 minutes, uh, that I was pretty drained by the end, uh, other than exhilarated. And the initial premise here in Argyle is that this m kind of nerdy but cute cat fancier named Ellie Conway and portrayed by Bryce Dallas Howard is one of the most successful authors of spy novels in the world and her hero Agent Argyle portrayed by the a strong jawed Henry Superman Cavill in what appears to be Ellie's musings uh, is a, a James Bond level pop culture icon so she's a big deal all right you know um, anyway her novels are somehow depicting real activities in the global espionage community things that should be top secret hush hush and might compromise uh, those shadowy conflicts when revealed so Ellie becomes a target of good guys and bad guys and who really knows what side anyone's on and that's one of the oh, you know, uh, aspects of this film that is engaging so there is so much promise to the first 45 minutes that gets goosed in a good way by the first couple of unexpected plot twists that the increasingly weird payoffs that don't really pay off start to disappoint until another loony hyper action sequence draws you in again and the, the cast is a list or a minus at worst uh that the always awesome sam rockwell who by the way for a brief time was a russian hill neighbor his dad had oh. a condo and i see him at the royal ground i didn't Cafe. know the how about that and sam rockwell would be reading scripts and, and you know chatting with the uh, did he know that time. he was right alongside within speaking distance to the culture blaster i was just another guy in the cafe oh, and i would nod goodness, at him Michael. in recognition and he would nod back he didn't do pistol fingers which i'm glad <laughs> yeah. That, yeah it's yeah. so la we're in san francisco at the time right and um I've met him on a couple of occasions and said, dude, we are both royal ground habitués. Oh, you have? Oh, says, you yeah, have. I okay. love it. Yeah, I, I thought, you looked, I thought ahead, yeah. you looked familiar to me. Anyway, uh, the great Sam Rockwell uh, plays an agent who may or may not have Ellie's well-being at heart. 
John Cena plays Argyle's partner in the field. Catherine O'Hara plays Ellie's mom. And Brian Cranston plays the head of a secret organization. But which one and what side are they on? Plus, you get Samuel L. Jackson and Sophia Boutella, who were villains in Vaughn's first Kingsman movie, although they may or may not be villains here. And you even get Oscar-winning actress and singer Ariana DeBose and in a small role, singer Dua Lipa. Sounds great. No. And you get these crazy needle drops, Mark. There was a sequence, and here's another San Francisco reference, a sequence using a track that I adore, you know, and I have broad taste, punk to classical and whatever, but this is a song I adore from the 80s by a San Francisco electronic musician and producer named Patrick Cowley with Sylvester on vocals, uh, a song called Do You Want a Funk? And the action sequence, it just pops off the screen and you're so excited it's early in the movie i see yeah and then but it falters know, you're saying it falters i am the but, whole uh, yeah. doesn't live up to the sum of the parts making this one of the least of vaughn's filmography wow it's too bad i mean Problem. it sounds like there's there's so many even people in the chat are saying i'm going to see the movie just because i love the cast uh, well, i will give argyle a mulligan despite its unwieldy execution because it's the sort of stuff i enjoy watching you know in the same way that i will gorge on mediocre spaghetti, since pasta is my favorite dish. I see. Argyle, a tentative, yeah. Okay. Anyway, it's in theaters. What else do you have? Well, let's move to uh, the indie realm because, you know, I like to cover the. Uh, yeah, you really like to do. Cover you're, the you're entire Mr. topography. Uh, Suncoast is a very well acted, occasionally and genuinely moving indie drama that folds a coming of age uh, story and a terminal illness weepy into the real-life events surrounding the famous Terry Schiavo end-of-life case in 2005 uh, at the Florida facility where Schiavo was under medical care. Uh, in Suncoast, teenaged Doris, played by Nico Parker, who, by the way, was one of the few good things about Disney's live-action Dumbo, the remake they did, she has been assisting her embattled, embittered, hard-nosed mother, Christine, played by Laura Linney, so we're talking about star power there, or at least acting chops, uh, as they take care of Doris's totally incapacitated brother. And when they move the brother into a hospice, it's the same medical center where the uh, 15 years vegetative Chavo is being housed as the legal case involving her right to death rages in a nearby courthouse. So whenever Doris and Christine go to the facility to sit by the brother's bedside, they have to navigate the demonstrators who are outside the building and protesting the plan by Chavo's husband to turn off his wife's feeding tube and thereby let her die. And there's more. Doris is enrolled in a local private school that her mother can barely afford. And Doris is trying to fit in with her much richer classmates, one of whom is a guy that she fancies and who seems to like her. So Suncoast has a dying brother, a frazzled mom, potential class conflict, and high school romance director Laura Chin, who based her script on personal experience, could have titled this, I don't know, Teens of Endearment. And, you know, thankfully she didn't. Uh, Suncoast <laughs> is poignant and, and never saccharine. Parker is so fresh and believable as Doris. Linny is, of course, up to her usual standards of excellence as Christine. And as a bonus, you get the... Uh, genial Woody Harrelson as a sympathetic pro-life activist who befriends Doris. There's also a cameo by Matt Walsh from Veep uh, as one of Doris's teachers. You know, it, it's good. It's solid. It is in theaters this weekend, and it will be streaming next Friday on Hulu. Oh, wow. Which might be the way to go for Suncoast. Wow. Saccharin's a ding word. Sure it is. Um, okay, good deal. Um, like Chin's uh, generally satisfying Suncoast, Scrambled is a very solid comedy from a promising female filmmaker, in this case, Leah McKendrick, who is the screenwriter, the director, and the star of the project as well. Sisters <clears throat> are indeed doing it for themselves in movies and TV these days, and sometimes with impressive results. Scrambled is about Nellie, a 30-something single gal whose friends are all getting married, or having babies, or both, while she is enduring a parade of crappy dates. Uh, to make matters worse, <clears throat> Nellie's dad, played by the always welcome Clancy Brown, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> wants to be a grandfather. Her mom bemoans Nellie's breakup with a guy who seemed like the one, and her brother is a, su a successful executive who likes busting Nellie's chops. And all the while, Nellie knows that her biological clock is ticking. The solution? 
freeze whatever eggs her body can produce so she has the option to be a mother down the road with or without a partner. But the procedure to get viable eggs generated and extracted is no visit to a hen house. And yes, the eggs are central to a very few holds barred comedy that's titled Scrambled. Uh, in addition to Brown, uh, familiar faces in the ensemble include uh, current SNL cast member Ego Nuotum as Nelly's best friend and Yvonne Strahovski. Uh, Strahovski and uh, June Diane Raphael as other peers. Ultimately, it's McKendrick as Nellie, her snarky script, and her assured direction that makes scrambled fry. Uh, no, sorry, wow. scrambled fly. Scrambled fly. I get it. Now, uh, it's in theaters. You this like weekend. it. It's a comedy. Uh, and yeah, you think, I thought it was good. Is uh, it a ha ha comedy or just a smile comedy? It's a wry comedy where rye you comedy. may laugh out loud once or twice. Um, it, those are both good. I got something better. How about another movie that was written and directed by a woman? It's the double X chromosome trifecta today. I'm telling you, buddy. <laughs> and this one, How to Have Sex, is the best of the three. In fact, it's one of the best films I've seen this year. Wow. Uh, with the caveat that it actually was released last year in the UK to sufficient acclaim that it has garnered a number of BAFTA nominations. That's the British Oscar, uh, including one for first-time filmmaker Molly Manning Walker. Uh, it's provocative title aside, How to Have Sex follows a trio of British teenage girls, besties Tara, Sky, and M, on what looks like the European equivalent of spring break, but is a pre-college summer holiday getaway to Greece. So the three friends are looking to party hard and to get laid, especially Tara, who is the only version of the group. Throughout the trim 98 minutes of How to Have Sex, they come off as painfully real people brought to vivid life by breakout actress Mia McKenna Bruce, who plays Tara, uh, Lara Peake as Skye, and Enya Lewis as M. They frolic in the Mediterranean. They flirt with their fellow vacationers by the pool at the hotel. They get wild at outdoor raves. Uh, and yes, they have sex on the beach and in hotel rooms, but it's not ridiculously explicit well, Albert uh, that's uh, as they share secrets and search for what the Brits used to call the old rumpy pumpy Albert thank you they yeah. also await results from their final exams which is you know a bit of a plot point so Molly Manning Walker impressed the hell out of me with this naturalistic script of hers and assured direction all of which resulted in a cinema verite vibe. You know, it's one of those you are there almost, it has a documentary feel. Wow. And that feeling of eavesdropping on actual adolescents at play, specifically girlfriends, being privy to their pain and joy is a remarkable accomplishment, and there is nothing exploitive about it. I am extremely eager to see what Walker does next, and the same goes for McKenna Bruce, whose ability to convey Tara's ever-changing moods is a marvel, her eyes speaking volumes. I mean, this is a wow. This kid's you really a fine. like this, yeah? It, yeah, it's in select theaters, and it's going to play well at home too. But if you want to support rising uh, filmmakers and what have you, these three movies are solid. And so I'm sorry. So uh, how to have sex is in theaters, and also will be streaming soon. It eventually will be streaming. It is okay. in select theaters now. And as Dave Letterman used to uh, say, "I hope to God your theater is selected." Yeah. Right. Okay. Okay, uh, Mads Mikkelsen, the Great Dane himself, as in Great Danish actor. Not, not a, he's not a dog. He's not. A dog. He's a star. Uh, he triumphs again in The Promised Land, not to be confused with the Bruce Springsteen or Chuck Berry songs, or any other movie with, with Promised Land in the title. The Promised Land, from director and co-screenwriter Nikolai Arcel, is an historical drama set in 18th century Denmark, and it concerns the struggle of the brave and resourceful Captain Ludwig Kallen, an impoverished war hero, to turn a barren chunk of land bequeathed to him by the King of Denmark into a thriving colony that can produce crops. And bequeathed is a Denmark. And uh, thereby uh, earn uh, Kallen... Uh, title. He, he'd like, you know, some kind of aristocratic title. So Colin finds unexpected allies to help him till the land and create a community, but he has an adversary. Uh, the local nobleman, De Schnickel, or De, Sch De Schinkel. De, it's De Schinkel. That's his name. I, these Danish names. It's amazing I can even say Mads Mikkelsen. <laughs> anyway, so uh, De Schinkel is as harsh and, and pitiless as the location. And uh, the conflict is tense and brutal. And you know what? It has the sweep 
of a classic American frontier film. One of those, you know, challenge the lands, westward ho movies. Uh, Arcel has made the Danish equivalent of a first-rate John Ford Western. And with Mickelson, he has the perfect contemporary actor to embody a man of courage and honor under duress, one worthy of the promised land in all its stark beauty. I, Mickelson as the Nordic John Wayne, right? Sure, partner. I think so. Anyway, <laughs> uh, it's in select theaters. The rest is a dingle. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah okay. Uh, you want to wrap things up on the movie side? Let's I sure do. I want to wrap things up all the, all the way around, Michael. Well, You're over your let, time. Let's deal with this here. The gorgeous and thoroughly original 2017 Oscar-nominated animated movie, Loving Vincent, about the immediate aftermath of the tragic life of impressionist artist Vincent van Gogh was not quite like anything I'd ever seen before, made by the uh, international husband and wife team of England's Hugh Welchman and Poland's Dorita Kobila. It was touted as the first fully painted movie insofar as each one of the 65,000 frames was in essence a painting on canvas. And I believe uh, it used the variation of rotoscoping, which is a venerable uh, cinematic technique that uses real actors on film. Venerable. As the template for the finished animated product. So the Welchmans have finally- So they did it, well, let me just understand this. So they did a live action. They film something and then they and take then they, each and cell that's and make a painting And that's unreal. And what was that movie called? It was called Loving Vincent and it's uh, uh, remarkable and beautiful. Wow. So they finally followed up on Loving Vincent with The Peasants, which is another spectacularly beautiful movie that translates film of live actors into a fully painted animated feature. Uh, the Peasants, with script and direction by the Welchmans, is based on a well-loved Polish novel of the same name, released in the early 1900s. The plot concerns a young woman trying to have her life um, and live it the way she wants to live it in a late 19th century Polish village, while the repressive and inescapable strictures of society in that particular enclave conspire to crush her soul and spirit. It, you know, it doesn't help that she's expected to marry at an early age, uh, the richest farmer in the area and a few other local men desire her, and she's in love with the farmer's married son. Love triangle, oh. anybody? It's more like, I don't know, a love trapezoid. And one with danger and problems at many, many turns, since all of that intrigue uh, amid rural trappings is depicted with such visual splendor, you'd expect the peasants to blow you away, and its tale of an oppressed young woman has resonance today, but you're kind of awaiting the inevitable, and you can get so caught up in, in the pulsing beauty of the animation that it sometimes seems at odds with the performances that underpin it. Still, The Welshman's dazzled me again, and as an animated uh, movie and as an aficionado of animated movies, I recommend The Peasants, which is currently in theaters. Wow, very impressive. Uh Strictures, uh, Enclave, and Resonance, all ding words. A uh, quick TV update? Uh, very quickly, Okay, sir. Uh, Feud, Capote versus the Swans, oh, yeah. started How is this that? week. It's on FX Hulu. I've watched the first episode, and I kind of got a kick out of it, and it feels like guilty pleasure stuff. Tell it, everybody what it is. It's a series about the contentious relationship that developed between the noted author and high society, uh, uh, you know, regular, a guy who kind of sucked up the high society, Truman Capote, a tremendous uh, author, a, a legend, uh, and the wealthy New York City socialites who embraced him only to be, get your dinger ready, already, a pilloried in his unfinished novel, yeah. Answered Prayers. Capote is played by uh, the great British actor Tom Hollander. He's wonderful. And the so-called swans are played by the likes of, here we go, Naomi Watts, Jessica Lang, wow. Demi Moore, Diane Lane, Callista Flockhart, Chloe Sevigny, and Molly Ringwald, uh, Gus Van Sant directed, and wow. it was produced by Ryan Murphy of Glee, American Horror Story, and uh, fellow Travelers fame. And as I said, it's on FX Hulu, but I'm watching, and I think, wait, wait, uh, wasn't this originally made for Bravo under the name The Real Rich Bitches of Manhattan? <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe not. Anyway. Uh, dude, Capone dude. versus the Swans on Hulu. Michael says it's a great sort of guilty pleasure. I thought so. Yeah. He liked the peasants from the creators of Loving Vincent. Does 
the peasants have that same style with it, the animation? I think I said that over the course of the No, I know, the, but, but, yeah, but you it, said it a does. lot, and I, does, and after it, a while, I can't follow it. That's why I had to come back and ask you well, about I, it. That's just some sad stuff. It's too much to do to Vineyard's wine. Why are you yelling? All right. So uh, it do, is the animated thing. It sounded it, really interesting. It is. Um, the in its way. The Promised Land, Mads Mikkelsen's 18th century Denmark offering that felt a little like a John Wayne uh, throwback movie. By the way, uh, our audience, very experienced in many different uh, areas, Doug says, Wayne would say, would he would address certain people as padre as opposed to a padna. <laughs> Sometimes oh. you say partner, sometimes you say partner. When I'm on the dude ranch, yeah. I use the phrase uh, high partner. Partner, yeah. partner, I see. Okay, anyway, uh, that's the story on Mads Mikkelsen. He said it was okay. No, I thought it was. I thought it was very good. Oh, really? Okay, I'm sorry, I lost it again I, in the. Uh, you're losing the thread. Well, it's a ti it's a Titanic. Uh, uh, what I, what am we I exploded to with the. We uh, list to one side with all of the uh, uh, descriptions. All right. Yeah. So Mads Mikkelsen's uh, the promised land he likes. Um, and again, the peasants he likes, and he also likes feud uh, Capote versus the Swans, um, for for different reasons. Of yes. Course. Okay. Now uh, I will continue with uh, how to have sex, which is the British teenage film that plays a little like almost a, a docu. Uh, it feels almost like a documentary. It's a verite kind of style. It is, but it's beautifully done. It's actually my big pick of all these films today. Pre college summer getaway, painfully real. And uh, it's in theaters, and it's uh, already won a BAFTA, I believe. Well, no, it's been nominated for, nominated a, number, for a, BAFTA. a number of BAFTAs. Okay. Scrambled is the, uh, is it a coming of age comma? You... No, no, that's that's the other oh, movie. That's the other one. <laughs> Sweat Scrambled is the one who wants, she wants yeah, to have she's... babies, so she freezes her eggs. Can you come of age in your mid-30s? <laughs> I, I guess you can. She Leah McKendrick. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you liked it. I did. I enjoyed yeah. it. I really did. Yeah. Uh, these three films by three uh, female yeah. filmmakers. Three, that's I, right. Yeah. Directed uh, and uh, leads are uh, women. Suncoast, the indie drama with the terminal illness yarn. True story as a backdrop. This is the coming of age one. Okay. And uh, Laura Linney, Woody Harrelson, Nico Parker as Doris. It's the Terry Chavo case going out at the yeah. same time. It's... In theaters, but be on Hulu by the end of next week. Indeed. Argyle, chaotic, long, but incredible action sequences, you said. Very fun, good action. Fun moments, and you know, you can't bitch about Bryce Dallas Howard and. As a uh, cat lover, I, I love Sam that. Rockwell. Yeah. The cat, Alfie, is. Yeah. Uh, you know, maybe it's a CGI cat. Can you love an Henry, AI cat? Henrik uh, Cavill and uh, Bryce Dallas Howard and. Uh, Sam uh, Rockwell, Sam Jackson. I you like the first forty five minutes very much, and then I was like, "Come on!" Yeah, all right. And well, every time, it. every time I'd kind of pull away, they would pull me back in with a great action sequence. Wow. Well, uh, so proceed at your own risk. Argyle is in theaters. Michael, appreciate you. You can find Michael in the Marina Times. His musings are there. You can also find him here on Fridays. Uh, Michael. We're out of time. Can we talk Niners more in the uh, following week, next Friday? I think that makes a lot of sense. Uh, I'm still exhausted from their come-from-behind victory this past Sunday. It, oh, my God. Brock Purdy, uh, the 49er fan base, loves you. He put it on his legs as well as his he arm. Thank you. Amazing. Thank you, Brock, yeah. and thank you, Mark, Kim, Albert, and the rest of the gang. And thank oh, you, listeners. Oh, thank yous. Comes and goes on a rainbow. Bye, Have a great weekend and go Niners. Go Niners indeed. Wow, it's a big Niners community. This uh, show started as a radio show in San Francisco, so that's why we keep very close ties with our San Francisco crew. The Mark Thompson Show. I'd like to hang out longer, but I can't. I'm not allowed to. i got to wrap up. I've got to call and get our website ironed out. I'm just concerned I may not have the actual information. I may have to text your husband to get information. I don't know. I'll do the best I can. Hey, Wes, I want to thank you for a super sticker. Big shout out. Big shout out. And thanks, everybody, who supports the show and sharing the show. Tip jar action from Walter in Hawaii. Big shout out. Big shout out. I'm not going to cry. I'm not going to cry. I'm not going to cry.
I will, uh, on Monday, I'll share with you the correction that I got from a uh, listener viewer. I didn't have time to do that today, but uh, appreciate everybody's correspondence. I'm at uh, the Mark Thompson Show at gmail.com if you need to reach us. Kim is doing the after party with John next. Have a great weekend all. Monday, Anthony Davis joins I'm us. I'm Shadow Stevens for the Mark Thompson Show. Bye-bye. Albert, thank you. Albert, thank you. Out of time. Bye-bye. Till Monday.